soaring high over the tallest of treetops, snatching up an unlucky land dweller for lunch and emitting long screeches that echoed far and wide. These are a few of the images one could imagine when asked to think about pterosaurs. And for some, this might be correct. Smaller species of pterosaurs were easily capable of flight, hunting or even scavenging in many different ways. But for other species, an air of mystery remains. Pterosaurs tend to be far more complex than people think at first. For one, they aren't even considered dinosaurs, despite living alongside them throughout the Mesozoic era. For another, pterosaurs likely could have varied drastically in how they lived. We still have a long way to go before we figure out these winged reptiles, and perhaps none of them are as awe-inspiring as Quetzalcoatlus northropi, often considered one of the largest flying animals that ever existed. Quetzalcoatlus is a genus of Asdarkid pterosaur, known from the late Cretaceous Maastrichtian age of North America. Its name comes from the Aztec feathered serpent god Quetzalcoatl. The type species is Quetzalcoatlus northropi, named by Douglas Lawson in 1975. The genus also includes the smaller species Quetzalcoatlus lawsoni, which was known for many years as an unnamed species before being named by Brian Andres and Van Longstrom in 2021. Quetzalcoatlus northropi has gained fame as a candidate for the largest flying animal ever discovered. With the wingspan of a small airplane, Quetzalcoatlus was a pterosaur living in the wetlands of what is now Texas, USA, over 67 million years ago. Researchers have found that its 11-meter-long wings meant it would have had to jump up to 2.5 meters into the air, followed by powerful flaps to pull it into the sky. When it was first named as a new species in 1975, scientists estimated that the largest Quetzalcoatlus fossils came from an individual with a wingspan as large as 15.9 meters or 52 feet. More recent estimates based on greater knowledge of Asdarkid proportions placed its wingspan at 10 to 11 meters or 33 to 36 feet. Generalized height in a bipedal stance, based on its wingspan, would have been at least 3 meters or 9.8 feet high at the shoulder. Estimating the weights of Asdarkids has been extremely problematic because no existing species shares a similar size or body plan. Even though at first they were thought to be around 70 kilograms, a majority of estimates published since the 2000s have been substantially higher, around 200 to 250 kilograms, or 440 to 550 pounds. Skull material from Quetzalcoatlus lawsoni shows that it had a very sharp and pointed beak. This is contrary to some earlier reconstructions that showed a blunter snout, based on an inadvertent inclusion of jaw material from another pterosaur species, as this material was named as the holotype of a genus of short-snouted Asdarkid, Wellhopterus, in 2021. A skull crest was also present, but its exact form and size are still unknown. Quetzalcoatlus was abundant in Texas during the Lancian in a fauna dominated by Alamosaurus, the Alamosaurus Quetzalcoatlus Association probably represents semi-arid inland plains. Quetzalcoatlus had precursors in North America, and its apparent rise to widespreadness may represent the expansion of its preferred habitat rather than an immigration event. It coexisted with another Asdarkid known as Welnoterus, as well as an additional pterosaur taxon suggesting a relatively high diversity of late Cretaceous pterosaur genera. The sky is the limit. Unlike some previous studies which suggested Quetzalcoatlus would be unable to fly, researchers found that the species would have been very capable by using a jumping start. The scientists argue the size of its wings would have prevented it using a running start as they would have hit the ground. If they could jump twice their hip height to 8 feet, the wings would be able to clear the ground and they could execute a deeper flight stroke. This may be the best option for taking off, though it depends on sufficient power from the legs. Once in the air, Quetzalcoatlus would have soared like modern condors and vultures, with suggestions its large head may have helped it to complete turns. 
Though historic drawings have compared pterosaurs to bats, the wings would have only been attached to the front limbs like those of a bird. When it comes to landing, it would have acted like an aeroplane, slowing until it is about to fall out of the sky before touching down. The animal had to flap its wings to stall and slow its descent before it lands with its back feet and takes a little hop. Then it puts down its front feet, assumes a four-legged posture, straightens itself out and walks away. Quetzalcoatlus walked in a way unlike any animal alive today. While vampire bats also use their wings to help them move forward, the bone structure of the pterosaur would have prevented this. To avoid tripping, the animal first raised its left arm, and then advanced its left leg in a full step, then it placed the hand on the ground. The process was then repeated with the right limb. It seems a cumbersome process to us, but the animal could execute the gait quickly and easily. After factoring wingspan, body weight, and aerodynamics, computer modeling led Mike Habib and Mark Witten to conclude that Quetzalcoatlus Northropi was capable of flight up to 130 km per hour, or 80 km per hour, for 7 to 10 days at altitudes of 4,600 meters, or 15,000 feet. Mike Habib, a professor of biomechanics at Chatham University, further suggests a maximum flight range of 13,000 to 19,000 kilometers, or 8 to 12,000 miles, for Quetzalcoatlus dothropi. It was also suggested that large pterosaurs most likely utilized a short burst of powered flight to then transition to thermal soaring. Feeding Various concepts have been suggested regarding the way Quetzalcoatlus lived. Because the area of the fossil site was 400 kilometers or 250 miles removed from the coastline, and there were no indications of large rivers or deep lakes nearby at the end of the Cretaceous, Lawson in 1975 rejected a fish-eating lifestyle. Instead, he suggested that Quetzalcoatlus scavenged, similar to the marabou stork. It fed on the carcasses of titanosaur sauropods, such as Alamosaurus. Lawson had found the remains of the giant pterosaur while searching for the bones of this dinosaur, which formed an important part of its ecosystem. In 1996, Professor Thomas Lehman and Van Langsten rejected the scavenging hypothesis, pointing out that the lower jaw bent so strongly downwards that even when it closed completely, a gap of over 5 centimeters or 2 inches remained between it and the upper jaw was very different from the hook beaks of specialized scavenging birds. They suggested that, with its long neck vertebrae and long toothless jaws, Quetzalcoatlus fed like modern-day skimmers, catching fish during flight while cleaving the waves with its beak. While this skim-feeding view became widely accepted, it was not subjected to scientific research until 2007, when a study showed that, for such large pterosaurs, it was not a viable method because the energy costs would be too high due to excessive drag. Quetzalcoatlus had the ability to turn its head 180 degrees, which would allow it to be more adept at finding prey and preventing ambushes from foes. Though Quetzalcoatlus, like other pterosaurs, was a quadruped when on the ground, Quetzalcoatlus and other Asdarkids have fore and hind limb proportions more similar to modern running ungulate mammals than to their smaller cousins, implying that they were uniquely suited to a terrestrial lifestyle. Quetzalcoatlus northropi was found in plains deposits, being likely a solitary hunter, while Quetzalcoatlus lawsoni is found in great numbers in alkaline lakes, and likely lived like modern gregarious wading birds. Hatsagopteryx During the late Cretaceous, Transylvania was an island that hosted one of the largest pterosaurs of all time. Now scientists think that this giraffe-sized stork-like reptile might have also been the island's arch predator. Millions of years before Transylvania became the stuff of blood-sucking nightmares, it was an island ruled by giant flying carnivores with a taste for dinosaur flesh. That island, known as Hatjeg, was a subtropical landmass insulated by a deep ocean basin. The fossils of dinosaurs found there exhibit signs of island dwarfism. This means they grew much smaller than their mainland relatives, likely due to limited resources. 
But the pterosaur, Hatsogopteryx, took a different evolutionary approach. Hatsogopteryx is big. So much so that when paleontologists discovered its fossil remains back in 1991, they thought the fossils belonged to a theropod. However, researchers soon realized their mistake. Unlikely as it seemed, they were looking at a pterosaur, one of the biggest pterosaurs of all time. Estimates of its dimensions put it up with a mighty Quetzalcoatlus. Paleontologists believe that its wingspan was up to 12 meters or 40 feet across, and its unusually robust skull was 3 meters or 10 feet in length. Scientists originally thought this group of pterosaurs were simply scavengers, but the jaw shape didn't quite fit the bill. The next theory was that they might skim feed like pelicans, but this too looks unlikely. Now, researchers believe that as Darkid's size and shape would best put them in the category of terrestrial stalker. This means that they could fly, but preferred to hunt on the ground like a hornbill. So, if they hunted instead of scavenged, what did they hunt? Most pterosaurs likely hunted prey much smaller than themselves. They could not have competed with similarly sized theropods, as their delicate necks and relative weight would have put them at a disadvantage. Hatsogopteryx, however, might be an exception to that rule. Without any large theropods to compete with, it might have developed a more aggressive hunting strategy. It also had head and neck muscles that could withstand a lot of force. This means that Hatsogopteryx could have been capable of stabbing and bludgeoning sizable dinosaurs. Hateg Island might have been the only place in the world where a pterosaur rose to the top of the food chain.